I've started working on Verilog code that allows me to use an FPGA to drive a VGA signal. Right now I have it outputting what I believe to be a mostly correct H-Sync and V-Sync signal. It's running on a 25.175 MHz clock to produce a screen resolution of 640x480. As you can see, my setup consists of a Lattice Ice 40 dev board and then a breadboard with a bunch of stuff on it. This is connected to a VGA adapter that I hacked together from an old video card circuit board. I put three 500 ohm resistors between the VGA port and the FPGA's RGB lines, like so. Counting black and white, this allows my setup to be capable of outputting up to eight different colors. At first, I ran into issues where it kept getting weird graphical glitches, like around the edges, as you can see. Um, but it turned out all I had to do to fix that was to add a couple of capacitors next to the oscillator. After doing this, the square waves on an oscilloscope didn't obviously look any different, but the video quality on the monitor looked a whole lot better. Now it's time to start thinking about color, and how I can display more than 8 colors on the screen. To do this, I need to make a digital to analog converter. In a video card, a digital to analog converter is basically just a circuit that uses resistors to convert digital numbers consisting of multiple bits in length into analog signals. There are digital to analog converter chips available online, but they're kind of expensive and I'm not entirely sure if they would work for this. I'm going to try making an R2R ladder. An R2R ladder is basically a resistor network that only uses two different types of resistors to convert digital signals to analog. Figuring out what value resistors you need involves a little bit of math. I saw this formula in a bin eater video one time, so according to that, if we plug in the 75 ohm output impedance from a VGA signal and we consider that a 3.3 volt signal is being inputted and I want there to be 0 0.7 volts as output. Um, that works out to about 428 ohms. The Graphics Gremlin is an open source video card on GitHub that uses an R2R ladder for its digital to analog conversion circuit. I think I've finally studied it enough to understand why they use the resistor values that they use. If we consider that the 75 ohm series resistor on the output side of that op amp doubles the output impedance, this means the op amp has to output 1.4 volts for it to work. If we consider the 237 ohm pull down resistor on the input side, and we assume the circuit has an input impedance of 237 ohms, then that means if we plug in these values into that equation, it adds up to 795 ohms. The two network resistor values that they're using for this circuit is 606 and 300 ohms. This adds up to 906 ohms. 906 is close enough to 795, so I'm pretty sure this is how they came up with those values. If this is wrong though, I would love to hear about it. Also, another thing that I just found out is that if you take this equation from earlier and you plug in the values we have for it, get 3.3 volts times 237 ohms over 900 ohms plus 237 ohms that actually works out to 0.687 volts so I don't know why I got a different answer if I plug all the values back into this equation um, but this further suggests that the values, the resistor values for the graphics gremlin should work for this too. So let's recap. Of all the resistor values on the screen, one or more of them will probably work. Stay tuned and subscribe to find out which one ends up working better. I think I'm going to go with the graphics gremlin values first. Um, all those resistor values are pretty easy to get, including the 237 ohm resistor for some reason. So, that sounds good. Since I'm going to start using 16-bit ISA slots and stop using whatever this is, this video card will have a 16-bit ISA connector. ISA slots do have one problem though. They don't have a 3.3 volt rail on them. Almost everything in my designs runs on 3.3 volts. 
Getting 3.3 volt devices to interface with 5 volt devices is as easy as slapping a 74 LVC 245 on there. This is going to be a relatively power hungry device. If every component operates at its maximum power draw, which it probably won't, but if it does, um, it's going to be drawing somewhere between 2 and 3 amps. I'm addressing this issue by using a higher amperage regulator. Um, this is a LM338T adjustable linear voltage regulator. If I build the voltage regulator circuit using resistors with a 0.1% tolerance, uh, this should give me a voltage of 3.314 volts plus or minus 0.1 volts. If that doesn't end up working, I could always plug an ATX power supply into the 3.3 volt rail and call it a day. Always be sure to double check your footprints before making PCBs. Doing it this way seems to be the most fail proof method. I swear it's like every time I don't do this I get a footprint or two wrong. Routing this thing was difficult. I'm using 0.6mm vias with 0.3mm holes. Some of the nets had to have clearances of 0.15mm and track widths of 0.2mm in the busier areas. I found that I could get free router to do a half decent job of using the middle layers for signal routing by setting the auto router parameters to these settings. So what I did for the layer stack up, um, the bottom layer I only use that for signals. One of the middle layers I use this one for the power plane. These are the 5 volt power planes, that's 3.3 volts, and then that's 1.2 volts and then on the other middle I just use this one for the ground plane um, in both of the middle layers I had to have signals on there because the routing was really complicated and then on the top layer I just have signals doing it this way has got me pretty good results before so I'm just gonna continue doing it so how well will this work, you may be wondering? Well, the VRAM can only be accessed by the host system or the GPU, but not both at the same time. This video card only wait states the host system if a host to VRAM memory operation happens while the FPGA is copying data from VRAM to internal FIFO block RAM. When the FPGA copies data from VRAM to the FIFO block RAM, it fetches some yet to be decided number of bytes from RAM really really fast. Then it copies it to the buffer and then does nothing until it's time to do it again or do a host memory request. Kind of the idea behind this is that the video card's onboard VRAM bus is way faster than the 8 megabyte per second ISA bus that connects it to the host system. I'm not sure what kind of maximum stable clock speeds I'll be getting, but I would be really happy to get it running at 65 megahertz, which could provide memory transfer speeds of up to 130 megabytes per second. It'll work with any clock speed equal to or greater than 25 megahertz one way or another, but the faster the better. It looks like I'd have to have it running nearly 92 megahertz in order to get 5% weight states during host to VRAM cycles in 640 by 480 by 16 bit mode, but a 50% weight state duty cycle in 1024 by 768 by 16 color mode would only need 47 megabytes per second, which is enough to happen all within a 25 megahertz timer. Well, I just got a bunch of these in the mail, so now I have work to do. So that's all I have for today. If you would like to help support future development, consider buying me a coffee. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.